My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, you and I, we are out for a snowy adventure. I am out here in one of my favorite areas looking for a new campsite. The question is, where do I go? There is no trail out here on this mountain, so I'm pretty much free to go anywhere I want to. One of the nice things about this area is that so few people actually know about it. This is a secret gem, and as you will see as I hike through the woods here, everything's pretty much undisturbed. And that translates to resources. Lots and lots of resources. So having a fire tonight should be no big deal. There is firewood everywhere. You all just saw how I was packing down the snow there, and I'm doing that for multiple reasons. First off, I'm going to put my tent on this, but second, I need to know what's underneath the snow before I set up my tent. If there's a big rock, a sharp stick, I need to know what's there. So based upon the stomping that I've done, this is good to go. This is almost perfectly flat, actually. Here in the mountains, that's almost unheard of. As you can see, there's quite a bit of snow on the ground. We have maybe eight, nine inches, something like that. Not too long ago, we had over two feet of snow here. If we still had two feet of snow, I would be wearing snowshoes, but since it's really not that much, no snowshoes today. As far as the weather goes, right now it's about 35 degrees. It's really not that cold. Tonight, it will get into the 20s, and snow is on the way. It doesn't sound like it's going to be that much of a winter storm, but maybe an inch of snow, two inches, something like that. That is what is currently forecasted for this area.
when it comes to my sleep system, what I have here is my Thermarest sleeping bag. Inside of that, I have the United States Military Poncho Liner, the zippered version. This is very sweet, and it's going to add quite a bit of insulation to this sleep system. For myself, this is highly unusual, but this time I brought a pillow. I am testing this out. And when it comes to the tent, that is the Heleberg Solo. You may have noticed that I haven't said that much so far in this adventure, and that's because I want you all to hear exactly what I hear, which is absolutely nothing. The forest here is completely silent. The only thing that you can hear right now is a plane and some birds, and that's it. How special is that? We still have quite a bit before sundown. And because of that, we might as well go ahead and make some coffee. Talking about the weather for a second, the last thing that I heard was that it was going to either begin as rain or snow late tonight. Transition to all snow after 10. Who knows, folks? Who knows? We may get two inches of snow. We may get nothing. I don't know. The one thing that I do know, though, is that this is one sweet spot. I mean, this really is a secret gem. I have a nice level place for the tent, a good place for a fire. All of these trees are blocking the wind, and today it is windy. Outside of the forest here, Winds are right around 20 miles an hour, so that's pretty impressive. All of these trees are giving us that much protection, and I'm thankful. <sighs> cheers, my friends, cheers. That is nice. Here in a minute, I'll begin gathering firewood. I'll have the fire right here. This is a great spot. Again, there is firewood everywhere. Luckily, where I set up my camp at, there's no issues, no widow makers, nothing to be worried about. Initially, my plan was to go to Lone Wolf Mountain, but unfortunately, I still can't get to the top of that mountain. The road up there is super steep, and it's also very long. And it's one of those things where there's still so much snow on the ground, I just, I can't make it up there easily, so it's not impossible to get up there, but it's certainly not easy, so this was a better option. Even though we are at a higher elevation than Lone Wolf Mountain. Let's see, we should be right around 6,000 feet right now. 5947 to be exact. Talking about Lone Wolf Mountain, I have begun working on the shed. That's coming along well. Well, it was coming along well until everything froze up. Now the mountain is covered in snow, covered in ice, and I haven't been able to work up there for about a month, which is a shame because I would have had it done by now. My overall plan for the shed, turning it into a cabin, is very simple, and it has changed somewhat compared to the video that I put up not that long ago about the shed. Hopefully we'll be able to make it up there fairly soon and work can continue. Gosh, I'll tell you what, this winter is going by fast. It really has. It started slow, but once it picked up, it started, 
hey, it hasn't been too bad, really. I think we're right around 30 inches of snow for the year, for the winter, so that's okay. That's okay. I'm not going to complain at all. <laughs> That's funny. Luckily with this wood, it is old enough and dry enough that sawing it is super easy. In fact, I think I could break most of this up without having to use the saw at all. But I'll go ahead and cut through the middle of this one and then we'll break this up. Yeah, that's nice and easy there. When it comes to building a fire, I like to go with the TP method. You build up a nice base, have it stand nice and tall. That way when you ignite from the bottom, all of that heat rises up, it dries everything out, and that's going to catch everything else on fire as well. As you build the TP, put the larger pieces of wood on the outside, having them at a sharper angle. That way, as all the small stuff in the center burns, all the big stuff will fall in. In the end, it just translates to less work that you have to do, basically. Now's the important part. You have all this small stuff, you need to get the big stuff on there. I know most of you know this already, but for those that are new to the outdoors, just a tip. That feels good and this is going to taste good. What I have here is a peak refuel meal. I've had this one before. This is the sweet pork and rice. And folks, it is flipping awesome. It is really, really good.
this is where we stand everyone the fire's going dinner's done and it's my birthday <laughs> how about that happy birthday to myself i guess i can't imagine a better place to be than right here right now with you all next to the fire dinner's on the way yeah 41 years old and it has been a very good 41 years it definitely has been with my wife and my son, they are really, really good at picking out really obscure and really unique presents. So Susie, she got me this like retro game system that plays like emulated games and whatnot. It has like 50,000 games on it, like old arcade games, Super Nintendo, Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, and all that stuff. I've been having a blast replaying games from my childhood. Some of those games are so fun. And some of those games are infuriating. I forgot just how difficult those things were back in the day. It's funny, last night we were playing and we fired up Family Feud or something like that. I don't even know why we started that game. But that is a game that will make you feel stupid to play. <laughs> it's from the 90s. All of the answers that it wants are slightly off. It's funny. It is funny. My son, he got me some prints for my office and they are really, really cool. He, is, he has always had a knack for finding like the most unique of gifts. And what he got me this year is truly funny. It's truly funny. Some stuff some people may not appreciate. A lot of it deals with like pulp art, the old crazy posters for movies and books and whatnot. Some of that stuff from the 60s and 70s is pretty wild. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Don't think I'm going to show it here, but uh, I will show you this. He got me this picture. This is a real picture from, I I think France, I think, from the 1920s. I would love to know what the story is behind that photo, but from what I've read, nobody really knows. The kid with the cigarette, mm, that's not too odd, but take a look at the size of that chicken. That is strange. <laughs> that is so dang good. <laughs> This is a meal to try. I think you will like it. There's corn, beans, rice. As for the time, it's about 6.30. It's getting dark. It's also quite cloudy. Fairly dark clouds as well. With this forest being so silent, it takes me back to a very fond memory of mine. Picture this in your mind. There's a snowstorm underway. Snow is falling, it's breezy, not super windy. I'm on top of this mountain on this bald, right? This bald is surrounded by trees. The forest surrounds it. As the afternoon goes into the evening, I decide to stop for a minute, have a cup of coffee. So on top of this bald, I take my backpack, I get my stove out. I take the backpack, I sit on it. That's what's keeping my butt dry basically from the snow. So. I get my stove going, I'm heating up some water. Something in my peripheral vision catches my eye, catches my attention. So I see this thing zip into the forest. So I'm staring over there looking, I maybe look for a minute or two, and that's when I look ahead and there is this little red fox right on the edge of the forest, right there on that bald, staring at me. We spent like five minutes just watching each other. It was just such a powerful moment for me and I know it doesn't sound like anything special, but for me, it was. The forest was so silent that day. Even with the breeze, the snow coming down, there was just nothing else. No birds, no planes, no vehicles, nothing. For five minutes, me and that animal, we had a moment, a connection. That thing was watching me, analyzing me. I was watching it, analyzing it. It was very, very cool. And it's a fond memory that I keep with me. I think about that all the time. It's moments like that that are truly special or at least for myself.
It's not all that late, but it's cold and it's windy. It has been a good evening. Super quiet, very peaceful. That wind is picking up though, it's getting strong. But as far as the weather goes, I have no idea when it's going to start snowing or whatever. I guess we'll just wake up and see, see what happens. For myself, it's now time to watch a uh, shitty movie. <laughs> I'll say goodnight for now, folks. I will see you all in the morning. Good night for now, everyone. Good night for now. Good morning everyone, good morning. It's a little bit after 7.30. It snowed, and it is snowing, but there may be a quarter inch of snow on the ground. It's not really that much. Right now, yeah, it's a little shards of moisture. I wouldn't even call it snow, really. It's chilly this morning, it's not really that cold. It's breezy, it's not super windy. It did get rather windy last night though, and then Around five o'clock in the morning, it started snowing and the winds died off for the most part. So all in all, it was a really good night. I would say maybe around midnight, I heard something that sounded like a bobcat screaming in the woods and it did that for maybe like an hour, just constant screaming, definitely some sort of cat. It was never all that close, but close enough for me to hear it. <laughs> I knew there was something I forgot last night. Man, that's my boots. I was going to put them in a stuff bag and then put them in my sleeping bag to keep them from freezing. After hiking around yesterday in all of the snow and whatnot, these boots were wet and I knew they would freeze solid and that's exactly what has happened here. These boots are frozen solid. Listen to that. That's all right, I can warm them up. It's just gonna take a minute. <laughs> Mistakes were made. That's how it goes sometimes. Wooden shoes. The easiest way to warm these up is to simply put them on. Luckily, it's not the inside of the boot that's frozen that's cold, it's the outside. Just in case you don't know, this is a solid fuel stove. And these are great for little short trips, just like this. The stove itself is very lightweight, and so is the fuel. You could easily throw that inside of your backpack, and you could go out for a few days and stay ultra light. The tent that I use for this trip is the Heleberg Solo, 
and it did a great job. That is a true freestanding four season tent and it is awesome. It is awesome. Talking about Heleberg for a moment. In a previous episode, I was talking about Heleberg tents. I was talking about the red label, the black label, and I made a mistake, but you all caught on and let me know and I appreciate it. I said in one of those videos that I had not tested out a black label Heleberg tent and that's not true. The Heleberg Namaj, which I own, is a black label. For some reason, I was thinking it was red, but you all were right, so thank you very much. Anytime that I make a mistake, please let me know. Well, I should say a mistake like that. If you see a typo or something, who cares? <laughs> My friends, cheers. Oh yeah, that is good. That is some of the coffee that my son gave me and also a viewer. It's an interesting combination, but it tastes great. Talking about viewers for a second here, I do have some shout outs to make before I forget. Someone sent me a Wolverine sticker that is completely badass. Thank you so much. There was no name. There was nothing on the package. Whoever sent that in, thank you so much. Wolverines! <laughs> That's awesome. Michael, my friend, I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you very much. Greg, the same goes to you. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate the wind meter thing big time, and I really appreciate the letter that you wrote my son. It was excellent. Marcus, thank you so much. Kate, thank you so much. And Devon, thank you so much as well, my friend. I hope you're doing well. I'm sure it's quite a bit warmer down there in Georgia where you're at than it is up here. So uh, cheers to everyone. Cheers to you all as well. For breakfast, I'm going with something super healthy. Cinnamon brown sugar with vanilla cream sandwich cookie things. It says nutritious steady energy for four hours. That's what I need right there. I was inside of the tent last night watching a terrible movie, Malone with Burt Reynolds. It was actually pretty good for a bad movie. It's a bad movie, don't get me wrong. Anyways, I was watching that movie and my mind just got to wondering. Anyway, I was thinking about how like in life, life is all about either helping someone or being helped. Everybody needs help, everybody asks for help, and you're going to need help as well. And I was thinking about how, as you go through life, all of the encounters that you have, sometimes it's with people that you know, sometimes it's with strangers. The other day, I had one of those moments where I could help somebody out. In my opinion, it was a cool way to help someone. This is what happened, everyone. In the middle of this snowstorm, it's snowing, it's windy, it's cold. I'm on a hiking trail on top of this mountain, right? So I'm coming down the trail. Part of that trail is on a road, so you have to road walk. So I'm road walking for a little bit. I hear some spinning tires. I go around a corner. So here's the road. There is a car completely sideways in that road. A little two wheel drive RAV4. Why they decided to bring that RAV4 up that road, I have no idea, but that was a mistake. So the road slopes and the ditch is on this side. So the, basically the front of the vehicle is in that ditch. So it's a husband, a wife, and two daughters. So it's one of those situations where I could just basically like walk right out of the snow. We were able to rock and push that vehicle uphill and get it turned around enough so that they can go down. I walk out of the snow, we push the vehicle, I turn around, walk right back into it. You know, I don't even remember if they said thank you, I'm sure they did, but that wasn't the point of it all. It was just being there, being able to help, and just walking away. There's something cool about that, at least in my mind. I'm not bragging about helping someone or anything. I'm just talking about that sort of situation. In this day and age, more people need to be that way. We need to be helping each other out.
Originally, I was considering a two-day trip, but Susie just sent me the latest forecast. I'm able to receive text messages, but I have no data here. Anyways, the latest forecast basically involves snow later on tonight, along with really strong winds. There's a high wind warning for this area for winds over 65 miles an hour. Because of that, I've decided it's time to go. It's not that the conditions are too extreme or anything like that, but with it being that windy, there's not much you can do. You can hide inside of your tent, you could build a fire, but the wind blows all of that heat away. So, eh. for the sake of this episode, I think it's a good wrap up. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. You can support Patreon, YouTube. You could join the Wolf Pack. It is appreciated. Until next time, be well, strength and honor. Bye folks, take care.